Welcome back. So now you see me how I made this lovely thing. It's just a box, nothing <laughs> special about it uh, in terms of uh, what it's for. Just wanted to make something, something similar to this. Uh, so the grain lines up. There was a discoloration here, and uh, you can see as it all lines up and uh, have a painted rim here nice suction fit lid and you can see so this is roughly three by three uh, it does have this uh, bark where was the bark uh, the length is a little over six inches, six, six and a quarter. So I'm going to mount this to the between centers first, and uh, I'm going to eyeball it. Now I have here sort of where I can get uh, biggest diameter, but it doesn't matter if it's a little bit off. Now on this side I don't have anything, so as I'm watching from this angle, this. Uh, I want to center it and uh, rotate it 90 degrees and now center this way so a little bit off like that and now you rotate it back to 90 and that's it just tighten up everything and uh, so now I just want to uh, make it round and uh, part of um, sections now I'm putting my hand over here so I deflect the shaving so they don't fly off too far in the shop it's more contained here around the lathe Slip. So I raise the rest up a bit. Uh, we go, this is more of a peeling cut, you go above the rotation and you're raising the handle until it engages. Somewhere around here, and same on this side. So I'm looking at the blank, watching maybe which side I'm going to pick up or down now I have this discoloration here this is maple by the way um, so we can, I'm not sure how much of this will be in the final piece because it doesn't go too much in maybe on the lid and the top of the uh, bottom of the base uh, okay so let's go with the base in the chuck This is sort of the biggest length I will have, uh, and that is roughly 144 mil, and uh, I'll just divide it in sort of. Uh, thirds so roughly I don't know 48 mil 48 mil okay so that's 
pretty much there. So 48 mil. So this is my uh, base and this will be the lid. Now I can go on each of the side of the line, but I'll go with the, uh, to the base side just because I have more wood down here. That's it. Um, now, uh, as the outside shape is concerned, I'm going to shape that as a unit, as a whole. So first things first is to make, um, I'm going to make the lid, uh, lid part, and I'm going to s just make a rough shape out of it and uh, make the inside what I want. Just for the beginning, I'm just going to leave a bulk here for a bead. Screw this up. And I'm going to hollow this out quite quickly. So. So, so the rest is up and uh, now with the square scra scraper I can uh, make a flat flange here. I taper this in a bit like that. Um, make a tapered And uh, this is the flange that will uh, be uh, the joint as well. So I want it uh, either square in or a perfect diameter or just slightly wider at the back here. So that's my goal. Now I can be a little bit more precise with the skew and I'm going to, I'm going with uh, slightly wider at the back. Like that. Okay. Okay, and I want to get this detail here at the flange. Like that. Let's see how it looks. Okay. 
Okay, so I can sand the inside. Okay. I can finish the inside. But I'm trying to avoid getting here at the bead. the wax since you can't fit it inside here at the entrance here and now as everything is warm I'm going to melt it and push it up into the box and I want to clean this off if I'm going to paint uh, this bead which I had in mind to paint, but we'll see. I just want to clean clean it off a bit. I can easily reduce the size if I have the wood, if I make it small now and sort of change my mind or anything like that. I don't have a wood, you know, so nicely finish inside. So now off to the base, you can use the skew. I want to start to shape the the box, just the rough shape. So, but I need first a um, few measurements, and that's this is the part that I can't miss. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, somewhere around here. Okay, put the rough shape in. Now the rest is too high. the top and I make it automatically inside inward tapered as I'm close to diameter I'm going to measure the widest part here of the connection which is this I'm going to transfer that here. Okay, it's there. Now with the skew, I'm going to get close. want to make sure that I didn't okay that's enough now I want to start to get the 
shape that I want and that is just to make sure now at this stage that it's really snug with this so I can jam it and shape it to, all together as a, as a unit, as a whole. So I'm wider at the back uh, uh, and uh, narrow at the entrance here. This is low peel cut. See a lot of big difference in shavings. Okay, so I made a mistake. I carried myself with the uh, shaping. Now I'm over the half of it maybe, a little bit over half of this flange, which is not something that I want, at least not at this stage. So what I'm going to do is remove half of this and go back. It will be a little bit shorter, but yeah, we make mistakes. So the quickest way to remove this is just peel cut like that. And here I have a rub mark from the base, uh, from the lid. So I can screw that up and go to that mark, like that. So this is where I, where it currently fits like four or five mil over the the edge. I want to get it all the way to the bottom of this. Now I'm just going to chew this up. This is low peel cut. So I think this will be probably it. Yes. For now at least. So what I would like is a shallow curve here and more of a flare out like that and I won't bring this down to this level now I can go with the spindle gouge or I can go with the skew with the skew up better with rest slightly up These are tight coils that you get. So a little bit more. I want to make something like this. So it has a nice lift from the from the table. Something like that. And now I can go one more time, nice and gently from this from to this corner. Uh, this is where uh, with the skew is a bit problematic because you don't have at the beginning, you don't have a rest for your bevel. So you have to be really careful not to have a catch. that that should be really clean cut it feels 
are smooth. just align the grain so this is how much of that uh, discoloration was left but it's still something it's always nice when you uh, match the grain and we have this pattern here as well uh, now I can see what I'm going to do with the bead now obviously you always want to do something at the uh, joint itself but I'm not sure or convinced myself at least that a big bead would be good here. Uh, my joint is below the bead. So if you make a bead here, uh, it sort of, the joint sort of disappears. Um, but in this case, I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to break a rule a bit and just make it some, try to make some different shape other than a bead. Now at here at the top I'm going to make a curve like this dome. So I'll try to mimic that here as well. Okay, kind of like this pointy Tough. and uh, same on this side like that I'm going to make slightly slight V groove here and one on this side as well That way I have a big groove here and here and the joint will sort of disappear. Let's just see how that looks. Okay, I kind of like that. Okay, I just sanded this. Now I have here electrical uh, isolation tape, which works quite good for this as it's pliable. I can stretch it and bend it to my will. as well okay so I'm going to put two light coats now as I <laughs> as I put it on it might be a mistake but it is what it is so let it dry put it on the lid and to unwrap it it's easier let's see just the red put uh, this curve as on the red band uh, it. not cool now I have to go below uh, the hole in the tailstock 
Ini aku bukan go Okay, that's too much of a I want to flatten it a bit more Okay, that's much better Maybe a bit more Okay, it's nicely clean cut. Nicely slow to the middle and I want to put something up here maybe. A bit deeper. Like that. One eighty. And two forty. This is spindle gouge, I'm going to make quick work of hollowing. I have still five eight something like that. Uh, keep, uh, keeping the uh, opening quite narrow because I want to do the rest of it to the scraper. Just this is rough getting down to the depth of. It. somewhere close Oops. Oh, still a little bit more so I'm keeping all my weight at the end of the handle now you can do this with a drill but this is quite fast, so I have a lump in the middle, okay that will be okay for now, the rest goes up and now at this square and scraper a longer handle would be preferable, but it is what it is, I don't have it. Checking the thickness. 
so I don't want to go any thinner here at uh, this lip but this is nice curve here now I can go a bit deeper so I need to put all my weight at the handle this is the lump in the middle I don't have any magnets like my mentor does. I just want to see where I am. Okay, I'm not too far off. Just maybe there. Just going to put a marker line. So I know <coughs> approximate depth. And I'm going to put the rest here where the post is so I have less vibration and lean on the handle this is a lump in the middle again see the surface how it's reacting that last cut didn't sound great okay the bottom is oh I still have thickness down here to play and I can go a bit deeper as well to find the curve here at the top where it's nice and even and go down this is a far limit with this handle it should have at least uh, 8 inches more to, to have a better leverage but I don't have it to wrap the sandpaper around this double sander thing and and the sides the bottom is clean you'll see I'll try to show you as much as I can the bottom get a little bit more oil at the top of the rag and just push it in make a sticky layer here at the entrance and then as it melts, push it down. And for that, I'm going to wrap the cloth against the towel again. And as I melt it, I push it in, try to work it into surface
Can you hear the pop? Okay, so at this stage, the, the everything is finished. Um, and uh, as this warms up during the sanding, uh, it does like shrink a bit. And I know from experience that it will go slightly uh, bigger, swallow, and this will get slightly tighter. But as it now is, it's quite perfect. So move the tenon here and uh, make some sort of a nice base. I'm going to remove the tenon here. A little bit rough here at the edge, so open the gouge up. As I'm in the wood, I open it. I start to with the flute closed. I open it. And uh, just get to a smaller nib some decoration here and nice can't fall off just to wedge it itself and when you open it you get nice suction pop you can spin it and this will tighten up a tiny bit as this cools the cools down I need to sand this a little bit more and oil it everything but you'll see the finished product at the beginning of the video and the uh, grain lines up as much as it can yeah. what is it? I don't know just a box